<sighs> okay, welcome back. We're going to continue the conversation on ChatGPT, but taking it from a different angle. So Google has announced now that they have their own version of ChatGPT called Bard AI. Now, it's sort of infamous at this point, given that Google's employees themselves are sort of sad about it. They do not think it stands up to what ChatGPT currently offers. So that's something that we'll be looking at. They don't know even when they'll be able to roll it out. So that's that's a whole other ballgame. ChatGPT and Microsoft are now together. And the reason why this worries Google is because Microsoft is integrating this into their search engine, Bing. And Bing has been infamous themselves being a really bad search engine in comparison to Google, but now they have a really big leg up. And so in our previous video, we talked about ChatGPT as it relates to Microsoft and being integrated into Bing as well. And it's just preview right now, but once March comes, it will be a really important factor for Google to look into because that's when it'll be fully rolled out. Why Google's Bard AI is infamous is because employees themselves are thinking that this is a silly announcement given where ChatGPT is. Given that ChatGPT seems leagues ahead of Bard AI, I personally do not think that ChatGPT will replace search as some people are saying. I do believe that ChatGPT is good at a function of text generation, right? A response when I ask a question, it responds as a human would. Now, that's conversational AI, but we should talk about conversational AI versus NLP, or known as natural language processing. Natural language processing is behind conversational AI, right? It interprets natural language and for ChatGPT, for example, and responds with a human response. Now, there are tons of different NLP use cases or tasks that need to be done. So Google actually has something called BERT, which they've had, I believe, since 2019. I have mentioned it in a previous video as well. But we should really be comparing for search, if we're really gonna go down that path, BERT versus GPT-3. And BERT stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. It's taking like five times to say that correctly. But let's compare the NLP tasks that be, can be completed with each because this was actually a question I had and I wasn't sure where BERT's use cases fall within ChatGPT, which ones are together, which ones are separate. So let's talk about five different things or five different tasks for NLP. When we look at text classification, both BERT and GPT-3 can be used for text classification. Um, and that would include like sentiment analysis, right? Like how, when someone someone is speaking, okay, is that, what tone are they speaking in? Um, span detection and topic classification. Then there's question answering, right? And this is really where we talk about Google, right? Okay, Google, when you ask a question, it will respond with the right links, right? How accurate are the links to what you're looking for? Text generation, and that's what ChatGPT's bread and butter is right now. Name entity recognition and part of speech tagging. So if we look at both BERT and GPT-3 as their natural language processing tasks, which one is better at that? It's by far BERT, right? Text generation is really where GPT-3 shines. It can respond like a human can, right? Google cannot do that yet. That's what Bard AI is for, to respond as a human would. And GPT-3 has been known to respond with wrong answers, especially given the data that it has at this point. GPT-3 is a lot more lightweight than BERT, given that the NLP tasks are much wider than GPT-3. So if we want to go through those five tasks for NLP, for text classification, what that means is it can specifically understand the context of a sentence and can effectively capture the meaning of a given piece of text. For question answering, that NLP task is trained to understand the relationships between words in a sentence and it can 
accurately determine the context in which a question is being asked. For text generation, like we said, it's indistinguishable from human response. And name entity recognition requires a really deep sense of understanding context. And finally, part of speech tagging, which is specifically trained on this task and can accurately identify the role of words in a sentence. Okay, so these are things to note when we are talking about Google combating ChatGPT. OpenAI may have the upper hand on ChatGPT, conversational AI, text generation, right, as an NLP task, but Google has a lot of tricks up its sleeve as it pertains to a vast majority of other NLP tasks and search as a whole. All right, let us know what you guys think. Do you think I'm correct in my assumption or my thoughts? Would love to hear what you have to say.